It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Monday, October the 16th. Good morning. I, along with Candace Wheeler and Tony Lee, with you for the next few hours. Brian Zepp is gone. He is in England for the week. Bastard. Uh, but, but in his stead, our buddy uh, Rudy Povich is in town and in the studio and hanging with us. Good morning, Rudy. Hi, guys. Hey, hold hey, on. Rudy. Let's turn that mic on. Well, first off, thank you guys. Am I on? Am I hearing myself? There we go. There you go. There it is. Hi, Steve. Turn Hi. the mic on. Uh, thank you guys very much for having me. It's a pleasure, sir. Yeah. Uh, it was so great because, obviously, I've known Tony for such a long time. Uh, so sorry. much so that I asked if his wife was his daughter the other night. That yes, he did. did. Wait, what? Did you- oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, she is uh, beautiful and youthful. Yeah. Way to go, Tony. Sorry about that. Is it is no, it her beauty funny. and youth, or is it your, what's the opposite of those things? Well, see, that's the way I took it, though. I took yeah. it as a compliment. Mm. Th- there's a, what, a 17-year difference between you two? 13. 13, yeah. Because I, I, I think when I found out that she was 40 and there was a 13-year difference, I said, well, I didn't realize you were 27. Mm-hmm. Wow, yes. I see what he did there. Yeah, yeah. and then That's yeah. reverse math. Yeah, that, that was the math. response it got at the club as well. So <laughs> he was, was kind of. No, everybody hesit- had to sit there and go, "Wait, oh, I get it, I get it." Sorry, <laughs> there was some hesitation. He's like, "Is that uh, is that it, that your, your your daughter?" I uh, <laughs> I I, uh, I I gave. I was at a, I was at a bar years ago. Uh, same. I had the exact same thing happen with a musician who. We were sitting at a hotel bar having a drink together, and a girl came in and asked for the room key. And then he gave her a quick kiss and said, I'll see you soon. She said, love you. He said, love you. And I must have had a look on my face, like, seriously? And he goes, dude, it's my daughter. And I was like, oh, it really was his daughter. And I was like, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. My bad. And, I, of course, I thought I was poker face sitting there the whole time. <laughs> oh, no, no, not, no. not the case at all. <laughs> Um, so it's Monday morning. It's October the 16th. The Vikings got to win. But before we go into that, I, I think I'd be remiss if we didn't start by saying uh, rest easy, Suzanne Summers. What a loss. Mm-hmm. Man. Yesterday, 23-year battle with breast cancer. Suzanne Summers, the day before her 77th birthday. A sweetheart. A gem. Everybody yeah. loved her. Just beloved in the Hollywood mm-hmm. community. Um, but and 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 again, boy, the the impact that show made. Three's Company. She was not originally cast. I think in a pilot they had someone else. They brought her in. Before that, she'd been famous in American Graffiti for just the girl in T Bird. The girl in the T Bird. Remember that? Gosh, she had yes. one line, I think, in the whole movie. She just said, "I love you," and mouthed it. I don't even know if she, she said mouthed it. it. Yeah. Um, and then and then from there to Three's Company, and then uh, and the, let's not forget that Thigh Master. Right, she was one of the first to have like a, an infomercial ready product. Right, that blew up, and then and then a clothing line. She did all these things, wrote several books. I saw it's funny. I saw a piece. Uh, somebody reposted something a few just a couple days ago. Kristen Wiig, SNL alum, comic mm-hmm. actress, writer. She was doing a bit like out at Largo in L.A. where she was reading from Suzanne Somers' poetry book, and it was all m- kind of making fun of it. Uh, from from a few years ago, not recently, and and I thought about it, and at the time I didn't know Suzanne was sick. I didn't know that the, you know she was in poor health at the time. You know, just this is like Friday. I just saw this, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking, like, man, that woman's been huge for like coming up on fifty years. Like, if you if if people are mocking your poetry book, mm-hmm. you're huge. You've made it, a, you know, just in a weird way. It's like because if you get up and say, I'm going to read from the book of that name, better be big. Uh, the, yeah. the shtick only works if you are taking down someone from the mountaintop. Right. You know what I mean? Still relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Re- like re- reading reading my poetry wouldn't have the same impact. <laughs> I was going to say, remind me later. I'm going to go home and write a book. Uh, there once was a man from Nantucket. Yeah. And we're okay. going to start there. And then at some point, I pray to God I get to a level that Kristen Wiig reads my crappy poetry yeah. at Starbucks. <laughs> uh, there's something about a twins connection with Kirby Puckett you might want to add to that. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that in there for a little local, local color. Sure, right? Speaking of, uh, so Suzanne, uh, man, rest easy. That was a that was a big part of uh, of of just the zeitgeist for a few sh- few brief years there, man. Like a meteor, mm-hmm. and then it sustained, you know, ever since. She's just that girl from uh, Three's Company, Chrissy Snow, mm. Chrissy Snow, Chrissy, and wasn't yes. it Christmas Snow? That was the character's name. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, speaking of local sports stuff, the Vikings got a win yesterday over those moribund Chicago Bears. Down in the Windy City. Robert Smith will join us at 9 o'clock to discuss the game. He called the game for Fox yesterday, so he was uh, had, 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 a, had a pretty good seat. And like unlike the rest of us, he watched the whole game. 
<laughs> a lot of us were napping through most of it. It Man, was very boring. It was uh, it was pretty brutal. That's life without Justin Jefferson. We have a great receiver core, but when the number one guy's not there, everybody else has a little mm-hmm. bit harder time getting open. As you saw, that's a huge uh, that's a, that's a big swing and a miss uh, for. Uh, you know, if it, uh, the talk of, oh, we can still turn this season around, it's like with J.J. gone, it's a, it's a foregone conclusion. Right. And then, of course, the Niners coming in next week who got beat in Cleveland, another foregone conclusion, they're not losing two in a row. No, it makes it worse because they'll be mad. Yeah, would have there have been any sort of big changes had the Vikings lost this game yesterday? Do you think they would have made some huge changes going into next week? I, I feel like you would almost have to because the season at this point, I, I believe I saw something the other day that there's never been a team that has been that has started the season 0-3 and has ever gone on to not, not only make a playoff but then go on to a Super Bowl. Not Never do a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. An 0-3 team has made the playoffs. It's it, uh, uh, literally a couple, three times yeah, it's in tough. the modern era. Yeah. It's really tough. 0-2 is tough. 0-3 is almost <sighs> impossible. Yeah. But no one's ever no no one's ever won a Super Bowl. That's certainly the case. Uh, biggest problem I found in the Vikings' performance yesterday, I didn't know about until after the game. Kirk Cousins, talking after the game, talked <laughs> about the fact that he drew inspiration in the locker room, listening to some music before the show, before the show, before the game, and that's cool. That's fine. I'm thinking like, oh well, hey man, maybe he's a Swifty. No, no, much worse. He's a Creedy. Oh my God, Aww. Creed, the song Higher. Was played in the locker room. Uh, Kirk Cousins <laughs> says that might have made the difference. Here's the quote. And by the way, okay, that's one thing. The Texas Rangers have been playing it, and it's almost like an ironic thing. The fans all sing it now because everybody rolls their eyes at the thought of Creed. Uh-huh. And the Rangers, they're they're up on there in the in the ALCS over Houston, one game to nothing. They beat my Orioles. They're playing higher, and it started as a joke, and everybody uh, got on. But in the Vikings locker room, it's like okay, there's no connection to the Texas Rangers. Right. It's a song that the rest of us hope to never hear again. My God. <laughs> um, but here's the part that's the problem. After the game, Cousins said, they've got quite a catalog. Oh. No, 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 yes. no. Honey, honey, Wait. honey, Kirk. No, they don't. They yeah. don't. Oh. I mean, there's like some solid songs. I'm not going to lie. Okay, I used to go. get a, you know, sing to myself in my mirror when I was... 11. Okay, exactly. When you were 11. Mm-hmm. Right. I okay. guess it's not 19. When you were standing in front of a mirror at 11 singing mm-hmm. Creed songs, were you holding a hairbrush in of place course. of a microphone? Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> All right, yeah. Girl, just How did sure. they let that happen in the locker room, too? Because you, you know that wasn't the universal choice. I, I can't imagine it was. I think it's just that thing of, you know, Kirk's going to Kirk. I think that's what they probably all just looked at it like. Hey, man, if he feels good, he that, is the quarterback. We should probably just let him roll. I love that. That's let him new, cook. That's a new adjective for boring. Yeah, they, He's very Kirk. Yeah, He's yeah. very Kirk. Yeah. You know how they say, like, someone's really getting going in a game? They're like, oh, man, sit back. Watch him cook. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. Watch him cook. Yeah. It's the exact antithesis of cooking. Listen to this <laughs> badass call. Voice crack on the snap. <laughs> Peter Brady in yeah. under center. Yeah, he's yeah. Peter Brady. Because when it's time to change. That's it, man. <laughs> I was telling Steve uh, before the show, we were talking about Kirk Cousins. And if you watch the documentary Quarterbacks mm-hmm. on sure. Netflix, it shows a 180 degree difference between Kirk Cousins and Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Kirk is having scripture readings around the fire with his family, yeah, which right. is great. I'm glad he's a family man. It's nice to have that in sports nowadays. Sure. But when the guy who's, you know, Putting up numbers and winning Super Bowls is having his 27th birthday with fireworks and step and repeats, and his wife's got a cake and it's got yeah. sparklers on it, and they yeah. have an ice sculpture of his yeah. age. Sure. I kind of want a little bit of flair out of my quarterback. Sure. A little bit of flair. Yeah, it'd be Just nice. A touch. You know, mm-hmm. when he signed that huge contract, they asked him uh, during a preseason game, hey, what are you going to do with all this money? You know, now that you're a big time sports star, what are you going to do? And I swear his answer was, I'm going to put some in the bank, and my wife wants a sleep number bed. Right. That's it? Like, buy a Lambo. Buy something, anything that makes you kind of stand out at least a little bit. It's going to go to Home Depot and Bed Bath & Beyond and go crazy. (laughs) Lame. Yeah. Tell you what, man. um, I I, I saw that Bed Bath & Beyond, I believe they've filed bankruptcy. They're going (laughs) under. 
Uh-huh. To which I say, thank God, because I can't get out of there in under 90 minutes. Right. Oh. It's, a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> sure. it's, it's, like a, it's like that game Mousetrap for me. Yeah. It's just no... I, I find a... I get to the end. I'm going to check out, and I'm looking at the basket. I'm like, what is all this crap? <laughs> it, it, this is cool. Why do I think I need all of this? The bed yeah. and the bath you're good with. It's the beyond. It's the beyond. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, no. the part that takes up most of your time. Yeah, no, no. Bed, bed and bath, that's like five minutes, tops. Mm-hmm. That's, that's exactly what it is. All right, so uh, Rudy Pavic is with us for the day, filling in for Brian Zepp. Uh, and we're going to have a good time. Robert Smith at 9 o'clock. And uh, in just a few minutes, the Mike Evans Hollywood Report. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Monday, October the 16th. It is time to go out west for the Mike Evans Hollywood Report. Good morning, Mike. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. This report, as always, brought to you by our good friends at Marcus Theaters. Marcus proud to announce value Tuesday, $6 for any movie, 20% off all concessions. And my theater of the week, there's so many. Um, I'm going to go to the Southbridge Crossing Cinema. Oh, listen to you. Yeah, I'm going to Southbridge Crossing. Yeah, Yeah, a little love for Southbridge. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. How about those Vikings? Um, Football team, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they well they beat the Bears, which is kind of like saying they you know listen to Creed. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from the war, but some Hollywood connections I can't ignore. Just a couple. First, Quentin Tarantino, who lives half his time in Tel Aviv, mm-hmm. is furious with Hamas sympathizers, saying, and I quote. How do you excuse decapitating babies, burning families in their homes, and taking Holocaust survivors that are in their 90s and parading them in streets before killing them, end quote. Okay. And, and some celebrities who are planning public appearances in support of Israel uh, sometime this week, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Pine, Amy Schumer, Howie Mandel, and Michael Douglas. Some Hollywood connections to the war, and I'll move on. Uh, show business business. Rodrigo Perito is the best cinematographer in Hollywood. He was behind the camera on Barbie, but he's also behind the camera on Killer of the Flower Moon. Opens on Friday. Buy your tickets early uh, for the weekend uh, debut. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the best movies of the year. I can't wait. I can only promise over three hours long. I got no problem with three hours if it's good. There you go. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, oh, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to sit in a in a movie theater with a big bag of popcorn if I like what I'm seeing. But uh, but I have no problem getting up and leaving if I'm bored either. <laughs> Hottest rumor that the Rolling Stones will make a couple of surprise appearances at small clubs in New York and L.A. to mm-hmm. perform several songs from their new upcoming album sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, that checks out. That makes sense. They've done that before. Yeah. The lead story, oh, I love this. So, um, Steve, the lead story on TMZ and uh, BBC Network in England on Saturday afternoon was the announcement that Michael Caine was retiring. Uh, we had that story on your show mm-hmm. on Tuesday, September 26th. The Nothing man? To hear, but I want to remind you of the movie, his final movie. Michael's final movie is called The Great Escaper. This is a true story, mm-hmm. a true story. It'll be released around Thanksgiving. The film has Michael Caine's character escaping from a retirement home to return to Normandy on the 80th anniversary of D-Day. I'm hearing this is going to be a great movie. I can't wait for it. I, I've always liked Michael Caine. He's great. He's great in Batman, remember? I, I remember it very well. It's not like it's that long ago. Yeah, no. I, I, he's fantastic in everything. Always yeah. was. You were just supposed to blow the doors off. <laughs> the pretty, Italian yeah, job? Yeah. Come on, man. It was great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> On a sad note, I'm so, so sorry to hear the death uh, yesterday of Suzanne Summers. You know, for decades, Suzanne uh, fought uh, breast cancer. Yep. I would see Suzanne at the Palm Greens Organic Cafe in Palm Springs after church on Sundays. She's always there with her husband. It's a mm-hmm. health food restaurant. Uh, always smiles. Always had a nice word to say. May she rest in peace, 76 years old. I don't know anybody that didn't like Suzanne. She was just a sweetheart. That's what we were talking about uh, already. We mentioned that. Boy, and just peripherally, uh, the little bit I know about people who've worked with her and known her is, yeah, everyone just thought the world of her. Oh, she was great. She was great. Uh, TV news. 
So here's the deal. I really like Kelsey Grammer. I think he's a great, nice, wonderful human being. I love Cheers. I love Frasier. I wanted to love the new Frasier that debuted on Paramount Plus last week. I told everybody about it. Mm-hmm. I gave it a chance. However, Steve, yes, I have mine. to be honest. This new Frasier could be the worst television show I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, you wow. know, it's funny. I've seen um, just on my feed, if I get on you know Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I see reviews. Uh, and it is hit or miss. People either say it's great or the worst thing ever. There seems to be nobody in the middle of that conversation. Well, for me, I'm I'm on it's horrible. I just, it, I mean, I I, I sit and watch it. I've uh, watched uh, three episodes, and I look over at my wife, and she looks at me like like it was a bug in the house or something. She's like, "What the hell's going on here?" Uh, odds and ends: the most shocking, beautiful, shapely, stunning, eighty-two-year-old woman. Okay. Martha Stewart. She has some more work done. She, her figure's great. She's 82, and she, she looks gorgeous. You know, she used to be a model when she was young. Okay, that checks out. Yeah, she looks really great. Well, I mean, why, and why wouldn't she, Mike? Yeah, why wouldn't she? You know, yeah. she does all that origami and whatever. It's good for you. time in prison. Got, <laughs> keeps you young. Origami. You, you got to fill the time in prison, yeah. and, and making doves out of, uh, you know, index cards as it goes a long way. <laughs> And finally, okay, I give up, I give up, I give up. I follow, okay, Taylor and Travis are the real deal. Uh-oh. I the real I give up. deal. What does that even mean? Hey, yeah. she slept over at his house the other night. Yeah, spending okay. the night. And, yeah. All right, fair enough. You want okay. a list of all the people that have crashed in my house? <laughs> Yes. So Vikings won, but you're not excited about it. Uh, they're going to get hosed on Monday night in front of a national audience by the San Francisco 49ers who are in a really bad mood. So there's oh, only oh, oh, oh. so much excitement we can have around here, Mike. Boy, yeah, uh, the 49ers, I was amazed. And Buffalo almost lost yesterday, too. Yeah, that's the uh, the London hangover. That'll oh, happen. my goodness. Hey, well, guys, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. See you. Right on. See you, Mike. Um, uh, you love a guy who says, hey, I don't want to say anything about the war, and then gives a 90-second Quentin Tarantino quote about the war. <laughs> Hollywood's involvement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great. Okay, sure. Right. Whatever it takes, I guess. Um, uh, there was something else Mike just mentioned that I that I wanted to uh, take exception to, but I've already forgotten it. Killer of the Flower Moon. Killer of the Flower Moon. It looks <laughs> great. Uh, apparently, the book is... I hate when people do that, though. When they go, they say things like, oh, the the movie's great, but did you read the book? I'm sorry you're a scholar. I didn't realize I was hanging out (laughs) with educated people. No, I didn't read the book, but it looks amazing. Did you guys see Oppenheimer? Yes, sir. Did you fall asleep? Not at all. No, really? No. Did you like it? I was down, man. I was right in it. Oh, I couldn't. Really? It was just, it was guys in a room for three hours yelling at each other, and then every once in a while, you know, because I saw it in IMAX, and when the bomb went off. Yeah. It was well. So- spoiler. Oh man, <laughs> the damn thing blew the doors off, and, and I jumped what's this, up. What's this bomb you're talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, the Viking season. That's right. the bomb. That's yeah. it. Uh, but no, it is. Uh, but for three hours, you're right. It has to be captivating for yeah. a three-hour movie now because they keep telling us for social media, "Hey, we want 17 seconds. That's the optimal time." Because our brains, that's as long as we, you know, pay attention. Mm-hmm. So why are we making three-hour movies still? Hey, listen, man. I, you know, I hate to go all highbrow on you, but the book that was based on American <laughs> Prothesis. Oh, <laughs> my God! Don't even get me started. I'm with you though. But it's three hours, that, and it's uh, good. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I'm camping out. I love it. Like Heat. Like that's a great example of a mm-hmm. long movie that's that just one. works. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. I, I'm glad you met what the movie Heat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got ex- I've got I've got issues with Heat. Are All you right, kidding? Well, yeah, I'm not kidding. Oh my we god, we're gonna it. fight. We I will happily fight with you, Candace. But right now we have to look back. Sports history on this day in 1983, my beloved Baltimore Orioles beat the Phillies five nothing for a four game to one World Series championship. I was on I 24. In Tennessee, when that happened, on a road trip, avoiding uh, a bad weather, long story short, driving home from Baltimore for my brother's wedding, didn't go to the World Series games there, but I was listening to the World Series, it's my team, the Orioles, follow me here, Rudy. Mm -hmm. I'm listening on AM radio in a car like cool people used to do (laughs) to the World Series, and I'm honking the horn on a highway in Tennessee, losing my mind as we won 40 years ago. I could take you to the exact stretch of highway where I was when that series ended. 
What did the people do who were driving in front of you they when just, you started talking? No, no, nothing. It was an interstate. They didn't even hear it. It was a, it was a <laughs> Datsun 210, and the horn sounded like this. Deep. <laughs> nobody nobody noticed. He said you were on I-24. I was like, is that a drug I've never heard of? Is you watching it while you were... No, and in fact, I can't believe I said that because it was actually I-40. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, Tennessee Highway oh. Oh. dorks. I can feel the corrections coming in. <laughs> it's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, October the 16th. That was hard to handle by the Black Crows. Ooh, reminiscent. It's so uh, much fun. Yeah, the Black Crows, you know, everyone loves them, but I just... Uh, everyone loves them, Candace. I just don't, I don't know. I know. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I, hey, look, you know, like, like a lot of great bands, they had a cup of coffee. It was pretty good. Yeah, I just, everyone loves these bands, and I just, some of them, I just don't get it. By the way, this is not radio shtick. Candace came to me one day, and she was, like, very honestly upset. She goes, I, I just, I mean, I like the Black Crows. are okay. I just, I was like, Candace, I don't care. It's fine. I, even if I were still in the band, I don't care. I don't judge. Uh, I, don't, I don't look at someone and say, you better like my music or yeah. we're not friends. Although I know plenty of musicians who can't say those words. Sure. You have to love my records or you're dead to me. Mm -hmm. That's how that goes. Um, so we can talk about my band or we can have more fun and talk about Creed. Yeah, and I was just kidding. I want you know, I was trying to set it up. I know. Um, but but there's no setup here. This is just straight up fact, homie. The Vikings got a win yesterday over the Chicago Bears. The Bears are terrible. Vikings went on the road. Hey, you know what? A road division win, it's always worth celebrating. I give you credit mm -hmm. for that, especially when you are missing Justin Jefferson and the rest of your receiver core is realizing how hard it is to get open when that guy's not on the field. All this to say, Kirk Cousins, after the game, mentioned the fact that they were playing the song Higher by Creed in the locker room beforehand. He said that it was getting them pretty fired up. And then Kirk Cousins made the comment, well, they've got a pretty deep catalog. <laughs> so we, we might even go deeper into the Creed catalog. And I'm just like, deeper? It's like going deeper into the Outfields catalog. They got that one song <laughs> oh, about God. using your love. Yeah. Or, or you know what? Like, you know, I was listening to some of the later work of AHA. <laughs> Stop. No, you weren't. Yeah. And if you were, you must have had a head injury. <laughs> but uh, so Creed is getting credit for uh, bringing the Vikings back onto the winning side of things. And I thought to myself, it's the, it's the simplest thing in the world to take a shot at Creed. Everybody seems to, for whatever reason, Creed and then... Nickelback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was like, it, uh -huh. I didn't even have to say it. You saw yeah. my face. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Canadian Nickelback. Everybody just decides they hate those bands, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my experience with Creed, I didn't care one way or the other. And the truth is, I, I met those guys once, and I was not impressed. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And and there's a thing, you know. Sometimes when you meet someone of a, whether you like their music or not, personal interaction can certainly color the way you're going to hear that music moving on. Sure. Uh, Rudy Povich is sitting in with us this week. Zepp's in London. Rudy, you just said you've met a couple of musicians, fans, and then later you go. Not so great in hindsight. I can't tell you how many sleeveless Megadeth t-shirts I used to walk <laughs> around in when I was like 17 mm -hmm. years old. And then I interviewed Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, who at the time had the big chip on his shoulder from Metallica still. And the guy had still. gone on. Yeah. And still, still had gone on yeah. and sold millions of records, had toured the globe, and yeah. it wasn't good enough. Yep. He was still angry about it. And yeah. afterwards, I went home and went, all right, well, we can take the poster off the wall. We can throw away the albums. I don't need it anymore. Oh, you were disillusioned. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. I, I, I've had that happen with, like, headlines. I mean, comedians. Yeah, they're, they're, you go to the green room and they're huge jerks to you. Yeah. And you got, I wanted to open this show because I wanted to hang with you. Right. And now you've Not ruined cool. all of it. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's kind of why I don't want to meet Stevie Nicks. I mean, I do, if you're listening, Stevie, I mm -hmm. do want mm -hmm. to meet you, but I, it is kind of scary. I mean, I couldn't imagine. What if she was totally mean to me? Would what would I do? You? Yeah, my whole life would be. I'd Ruined. I can tell you this. Trust me when I say this, she would be wonderful to you. It's Gigi you'd have to look out for. <laughs> Stevie makes kicks dogs. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. No, totally different. Oh my God, Steve, it, you no, weren't here last week because not, of your that's not true. Two thing, but I had a dream. I had a dream last week. Did you hear about the dream? I, I have, who didn't hear about your dream, Candace? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I missed it. What happened? So Stevie Nicks came to like a party of mine and she gave me the microphone and we sang together and the microphone was like a hundred pounds. So I dropped it. Felt really bad, but she was super cool about it. We were like really hitting it off. And then the party continues on and I look over and she's making out with Gigi. 
Oh boy, that's Stevie right. Stevie Nicks yeah. is yeah. making out with my dog. And yeah. this, and what did you had to eat? What did you eat right before you went to sleep? <laughs> probably something dumb. Yeah, probably something. <laughs> wow, you know, that's strange. Thing. You know, yeah, uh, Chris Shefflett from the Foo Fighters, Foo Fighters, gu- guitar player, has hey. a great story. He told it on his podcast about how he was. Uh, they were doing a show, L.A., sold out, whatever it was. I think, you know, the stadium out there, 50,000 people, and they bring Stevie Nicks out on stage. And Stevie Nicks walked past him and took her sunglasses off and handed them to him. <laughs> <laughs> like he was like a, a roadie yeah, or something. Right, like, here right. you go, kid. And he just stared at him. I don't know. What yeah. am I supposed to do with these? And he looks at his guitar tech and he's yeah, like, right. could you please come take her sunglasses That's off? That's awesome. With these? I just got, I got a text from Shiflet yesterday. So really? he, he and I are, we both are big fans of Arsenal, the soccer team from North London. Mm-hmm. Lifelong fans, as it turns out. They had a big win over Man City like 10 days ago. And I texted him during the game as we normally do. He just answered yesterday. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm still buzzing. I'm like, yeah, what have you been doing the last 10 days? Anyway, <laughs> he's a great dude. Oh, he's best. got a lot. It's, and, and that's a whole series of stories of what it's like to be in a band where one guy gets all the attention and and not that he has a problem with it at all like he can see the the absurdity of things like that like sure. you're the guitarist in Foo Fighters for 25 years and Stevie Nicks hands you her glasses because yeah. you're not Dave Grohl <laughs> yeah you know the, the band no doubt with Gwen Stefani mm-hmm. their, their second big hit I believe was Don't Speak and yeah. the entire video is Gwen Stefani is getting all the you know the, the photographs the paparazzi yeah, yeah. but the rest of the band is in the shadows this was foreshadowing, boys. Did you not see this happening six yeah, months yeah. from now? How she yeah. was going to blow up, and we're never going to remember you. Uh, wasn't the whole storyline of like, no, no, we're a band. Now we were making fun of the fact that people think we're going to be bitter about it. And it was like, <laughs> um, really? No, <laughs> huh. that's funny. Um, but so, so getting back to the original point, the Vikings uh, quarterback Kirk Cousins has discovered Creed 24 years later. Um, and and hey, whatever work. Hey man, you know what? If you're going to win games. Then I'd say go. Then play Creed. Play it backwards. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care. Do what you got to do. But there was a moment when Creed really was. I mean, they were huge, huge in the late '90s, uh, and and very and and there was. I, I it's, it's always weird to me what turns. What is it about certain artists or? It could be anything where everybody loves it, but then you can tell this is going to turn. And when it does, there's going to be no bouncing back from it. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of bands that happens to you're just it's all working. You know, I don't I don't remember. I mean, Scott Stapp had some moments along the way where he was pissing people off. Quiet Riot's a great example. Uh, that singer in Quiet Riot just badmouthed every other band on earth for three years and then woke up one day and realized, oh, I just ruined our whole career because oh, nobody man. wants to take my phone calls now. These sort of things happen. Um, but but the but I, I don't know. There's something about Creed. W- Scott Staff, remind me, guys. Big. First of all, he was cr- card carrying Christian. He was talking about the fact that we're we're not a Christian band, but we're Christians. Yeah. But right. then he kept doing that weird thing where he would snort coke off strippers' bottoms. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, just like Jesus would. <laughs> just like Jesus would. Have. And then he kept doing all these other things, and he was just living a lifestyle that did not match that at all. I think that may have played a part of it. Kirk Cousins, of course. He's walking it like he talks it. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. he's just focusing on the art and not the artist. Probably the best thing to do. Trust the art, not the artist. That's what they say. Mm-hmm. I have this promotional T-shirt I got for the movie Creed. And if I wear it, I feel the need to explain. That's, no, it's, it's not the band. <laughs> it's yeah. not the band. Uh-huh. You're more Apollo, not staff. Right. I just yeah. have to say, people on uh, the KQ listeners are Creed fans. Is that true? To the KQ Facebook page. Yeah, Creed rocks. Creed's a great band. All these Creed, 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 Creed. Creed. Well, that, well, it. that's good. Well, then we've got. Well, then we've the, enough time has passed to remove from the context. If the if the music stands up, the music stands up, right? I mean, yeah. that's kind of what we get. It's like you know, there's things that we like. The there, there's things we like or dislike that fly mm-hmm. in the face of conventional wisdom. Candace, you mentioned the movie Heat uh-huh. uh, last hour. Yes. And you brought some heat because at the mirror, I said something about I got an issue with heat, and you jumped out of your chair. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> now, now is this just because you've got this lifelong compulsion uh, in, involving Al Pacino, well, or no. are you going to die on the hill that <clears throat> Heat is a great film? I think it's a great film, but mm-hmm. it's the first part is true what you said. So basically, I went to Blockbuster when I was like 13, and I rented Heat because it had Robert De Niro in it because I was getting all obsessed with Robert De Niro. And then I realized who Al Pacino was through Heat. Okay. And then everything went crazy <laughs> since. I you know, watched all of Al Pacino mo- his movies and just went crazy. So that and was like the first Al Pacino movie I ever saw. See, Heat's getting a lot. There's a lot of people that I know 
uh, either actually personally or people that I follow, I guess, on social media. But he gets a lot of love, mm -hmm. and I missed it in real time and went back and just last year for the first time watched it. And I watched the whole thing, and it was over, and I went, huh, okay. Really that didn't was, move you. That was okay. It was fine. I, did, I just did not get... Uh, and I do my best to not allow the fact that it's getting pumped up. I'm trying to take it in. And I, I feel like I'm as good as you can be at going, okay, I'm going to, it's 1995. I'm getting the context. I'm not getting ahead of myself. And I still just watched it. I couldn't tell you a thing about it now. Nothing, not, not one bit of it stuck with me. It was very cool visually. And I wanted yes. De Niro to live. That would have made it just spectacular yeah. at the end. Well, I get Michael Mann, uh, the visuals, sure, that's a big part of his movies. Mm -hmm. But I, I was left saying, what am I missing? And, I, and I'll, it was just what it is. The, Napoleon Dynamite. Didn't laugh <laughs> once. Oh, my God. That is Did the most iconic once. movie of my generation. Tina, finish your just, dinner. I, I could not have cared less. Two minutes in, I was like, really? This yeah. is it? It's just oh, my one, God. It's just like, a, it's, it's just like a, when a dog plays one note on the piano. Oh, he's playing piano. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, get your dog away from the piano. He's got one note. That's what I felt like. <laughs> no. I watched the whole movie. I didn't laugh one time. Okay, what does that, well, what does that say about me? What does it say about your generation, Candace? <laughs> well, I got one that you're going to probably freak out. What is it? Mm. I don't like you two, and I just feel like everyone thinks yeah. they have to the say The two of us, love. or which two? <laughs> I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm not. A, listen, there are, are great moments with you two. I feel the same way about uh, Hall and Oates. You can have making my dreams come true, but you can't have man eater. You can't have both. You get one. Wow. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Okay, but well, I don't even know how to. Uh, we got we to backtrack <laughs> this one. Um, yeah, I've had my moments with you two, uh, but I was there. See, I was there at the jump. A ninth grade, the yeah. first album, flawless, perfect. Second album, eh, war again, amazing. So I, I rode with them, and then I lost track around the mid nineties. I was yeah. through Octung Baby, and then it went a little sideways for me personally. Oh. I can't, I can't help but look at you two and just literally kneel in awe at a band that started when they were all sixteen and they're still together. Same four guys. Only band any of them have ever been in. Still making decisions as a group. Mm -hmm. All the things I thought a band would be, that's what U2 has been. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean they don't have cute. their own internal squabbles. They have, they have <laughs> tons of them. But but they, you know, but they keep they you know, they keep it in house. I just like band. I like the concept of bands and I love when a band is a really great band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say the same thing about Metallica. I don't like Metallica's music, but all hey man. Tip of the cap. Well sure. done, fellas. Yeah. Way to go. Same thing I would with Coldplay, too. Ugh. They became just like too precious and very uh, I can't. mocked. I liked I liked the I liked the yellow. I liked the first song. See, I, I was never a fan either. And then a an old boss of mine said, Hey, uh, I got tickets to Coldplay. Do you want to go? I said no. And he goes, They're fourth row. And I was like, All right, okay. I'll, I'll yeah, go. Fourth row, yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah. Blew my mind. One really? of the best really? oh, became a huge Coldplay fan mm -hmm. the next day. Oh. Yeah. They're great. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, there are things. And, and by the way, you know, again, this is all going back to the it's so easy to make fun of Creed. I don't I don't dislike things because I because everyone else likes them. I love being a part of the bandwagon. I love getting caught up in everyone loves this. And I do, too. That's actually where I'm at. My my favorite band of all time is the Beatles, for God's sake. Yeah. It's it's not like I'm, you know, I'm not walking around going, I'm big star. I mean, I love big star, too, but I'm not going to suggest they mean more than the Beatles do. But, but there's just certain things like that Napoleon Dynamite. Everyone I knew loved it. Yeah. But the all time, my all time, I will die in this hill. Never wanted to leave a movie more that I stayed for the whole thing of was Forrest Gump. <laughs> Yeah, I just, didn't do, do it for me either. I thought it was a little too contrived, a little too precious. Oh, so How about that precious. soundtrack, though, man? All those Doors songs. Yeah, I could. I would have been happier at home without watching that movie, listening to that music the way <laughs> God intended me to. <laughs> It's just how it is. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what it is. There's just certain things. What What's the thing everyone loves? Rudy, come on. You got to have one that you're like, you know it's, you know you can't defend it, but it's just you hate it. I take a lot of heat for this one, no pun intended. Richard Marks Ballads. <laughs> oh, well, uh, no, I get it. Wherever you go, whatever you do, yeah. I will be right here waiting for you. That is the type of stuff I would say to like my sixth grade girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I don't know what it was. Like, yeah. there's that, there's Dane Cook. I know people poo poo oh all over God. Dane. I love me some Dane Cook. I was obsessed with yeah. Dane Cook in mm -hmm. high school. I missed yeah. the whole thing. I, I really don't know much about him, but all I know about Dane Cook is that narrative. Like, people really mm -hmm. hate him, but boy, he did great. Yeah. yeah Why'd they turn <laughs> on him so dramatically? I don't know. I, and, there's, and there's a whole story that he talks 
talks about where his brother embezzled millions of dollars uh-huh. from him. I mean, it took him for everything. And wow. yet battled back. You know, it's a kind of a weird rags to riches oh, story. It's kind of a riches to riches story, actually, if you think about it. He, but, and, he and Billy Joel. Got to watch your back. Yeah. <laughs> Family members. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I've, I've always liked him, and I know other comics because I think it's more style and not substance because he's one of these guys who runs a lot, and he, he'll he'll kind of walk the stage like Chris Rock, but then when he gets to a punchline, he stops. Okay. And then puts his hand in the air and then says the punchline, <laughs> and it's sort of his signal to the crowd to go, this is where you laugh. Oh my where God. there's really no joke, it's just all you're just kind of mesmerized by how flashy it is. <laughs> okay, well now, see, now I'm intrigued. Now I have to take a look. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to do that during the break. Uh, guess what? In 45 minutes at eight o'clock, we're going to be giving away Queen and Adam Lambert tickets. Yeah, that's right. You want to hang around for that. Uh, but up next, uh, the younger generation have discovered the joys of. Walking. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Brian Zepp is in England for the week because he's a big shot. Rudy yeah. Povich is sitting in in his stead, uh, and, and the rest of us are it's business as usual. But um, anyway, uh, Rudy, in 30 minutes from right now, we're going to be giving away Queen and Adam Lambert tickets, so you're going to want to hang around with that. Absolutely. Uh, Kirk Cousins likes Creed. That's the big news of the weekend. <laughs> Not that the Vikings got a win, but the fact that Kirk Cousins, 24 years after the fact, has decided Creed is good music. It certainly got him going. On the KQ Facebook page, uh, the question, what's something you love that people might judge you for? And yet, to your point, Candace, a lot of people giving Creed mm-hmm. all the love in the world. Yes, apparently they have good music. Um yeah, it's a great thing. I, I like yeah. Creed for <laughs> nostalgic reasons, you know. Okay. But, um, well, That's probably uh, for him, too, though, because he's not... I didn't realize that Kirk Cousins was 35. He's only three years older than me. What did you think he was? Older. He's an NFL quarterback. They don't really yeah. go that long. Other than Tom like Brady, they don't 80. make it to 40. Yeah. He's got the attitude of an 80-year-old. On Facebook, on the KQ page, Aaron <laughs> wrote, I love air supply and don't care who knows it. a mm. girl. Wow. Yeah, I'm in. Hey, man, I can get misty-eyed at a Little yeah. River Band yeah. song. Speaking of which, reminiscing. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry, don't be late. I can oh. hardly wait. Get me. Don't get me started. <laughs> You'll tear up. Oh, there's no shortage of songs that put me right back at the middle school dance, and I'll be yeah, like, yeah. oh, come on, man. Yeah, Air Supply is one of those groups that if they're playing like a casino in the middle of Iowa and I happen to be there, I'm like, I'll take the free tickets. Let's sure. go. Let's, let's yeah. fire it up. Yeah, absolutely. I will. I will not think twice about reliving that the seventh grade Sadie Hawkins dance yeah. all day long, mm-hmm. and wondering why Sherry Parker wouldn't ask me to dance. It's because you liked Air Supply. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's what it was. Um, but uh, but a lot. So so there's a lot of you know we can all make fun of Creed. We can all make fun of things that everybody loves or that we hate and all that. Uh, but but there's no issue that seems to polarize people more. And it's because we're all guilty than how addicted we all are to our smartphones. Mm-hmm. Uh, s- smart or smart, as I just said. <laughs> There's a new trend. Check this out. I saw a TikTok video, and it's getting it's there's millions of views, and it's all because of this. A younger woman, a younger a woman in her twenties, uh, did a really bizarre thing and shared it on social media. She took a thirty-minute walk, and she calls it silent walking. Wow. When you say silent walking yeah. to me, what I thought was what you put on your noise canceling headphones and literally walked in silence. No, silent walking now is where you simply go take a walk and you leave your phone at home. 30 minutes without a smartphone, can you do it? And if you can, and for people who do, they're talking uh, at great length about what a difference it makes and how amazing it is to be tuned in to the world around you for the first time in a lot of these people's lives. How yeah. about you? You just you you turn it off, but you still have it with you. Like if you're taking a stroll in Central Park, something could happen. You want to have yeah, your exactly. phone with you, so just no, turn it off. No, Tony. No. Oh, it must be nice being <laughs> I'll a man. Leave the phone at home. <laughs> Come on, kick it old school. I did the Target run last night at like six thirty, mm-hmm. and realized when I got there, I did not have a phone in my pocket, and felt like I I, I need to run home. I know I'm only going to be here for fifteen minutes, uh-huh. but I, it's worth yep. the trek back home to make sure the phone is in the pocket. Because yeah, you're right. What happens if that? You know, we were talking earlier. Uh, Steve and I were talking off air about uh, you know going to concerts and 
just, hey, man, if we get lost, we're just going to have to find each other. Yep. You walk around till you find somebody. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. My, my son, who's 23 years old, he said to me a few years ago, we were talking once, and he goes, he just, out of the blue, he goes, you know there's never a time where I don't know where all my friends are? Hmm. I said, yeah. what do you mean? Yeah. He goes, I mean... I know where everyone is. He goes, and I was, and this is when he had started going out to bars and stuff. He's a college kid. And he goes, how did you guys used to meet up? And I said, <laughs> it just happened. Yeah. He yeah. goes, how? And I go, well, I, uh, there's three or four places I might be. There's three or four places all my friends might be. And every now and again, we all ended up at the same place together. And it was the best night ever. And he was like, I would love I would love to walk into a bar and be surprised at who was there. Sure. And I did think, like, yeah, that's a big part of the human experience you're missing out on, right. which is who knew this was going to happen? Mm-hmm. And in his generation, they all know everything. Yeah, the yeah. spontaneity. Or sometimes just driving around and recognizing somebody's car and yeah. going, oh, they're here. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah, all that kind of stuff. And so as much as I want to make fun of kids for not knowing how to take a walk without a smartphone, to your point, Rudy, I, uh, when I go, I'll, I'll go to the grocery store and I, I leave, I've started recently, I have a new car, uh, this year and, uh, and it's got that little slot you can just lay your phone in to charge it. You don't have to plug it in. So I put that in there. It's a nice little cubby. And then I always forget. I just get out and I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. If I'm running to the grocery store for like one thing and I will realize that on my phone, I don't, I, this is why I need to go get it. Cause I'm like, if I don't get it. Rosemary's going to send me a text and say, oh, I forgot. Make sure you get bananas, too. And I won't see the text. And then I'm going to drive home. And then I'm like, well, but, you know, back in the day that used to happen. And we just had to deal without having bananas. Mm -hmm. Why is it different now? (laughs) Being 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 findable at all times. It just it just winds me up. But I'm like you. It's like, man, if I when I don't look, I, I looked for a phone over the weekend. I said, hey, babe, where's my phone? Call it. And then, I, of course, I had my ringer turned off, so I couldn't find it. And it was literally on the table just under a magazine, which I thought I'd looked at, but I hadn't. And I had spent 30 minutes trying to find my phone. Sure. It was right in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I had missed nothing. No one texted. <laughs> there wasn't a phone call. Nothing. Yeah, that is the saddest part of the day when you do forget your phone and you come back an hour later to no <laughs> notifications. Yeah. Like, does no one love me anymore? What happened? Lose that. Oh, that's really true. There is a yeah. I I wouldn't have. I would never acknowledge that. But when yeah, when you go through any amount of time without your phone and there's nothing on it, it is kind of like a, a, a drag. Mm-hmm. It's a letdown. Do you guys have a Life 360 on your phone at all? Uh, no, sir. Uh, you, your kids are probably a little too old for that. But my daughter's 15, almost 16. So we have an app called Life 360. Okay. That is like a. It's pinpoint accurate as to where they are at all times. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So you can always, okay. Yeah, it's kind of big brotherish, but there's a way you can set it up uh, on the phone where the parents can see where the kids are, but the kids cannot see where the parents are. Oh, oh boy. And my daughter, because I told her one day, you know, like, not that she had lied, but she said, I'm going to go to a friend's house, and then they ended up going to Starbucks or wherever. Yeah. And I said, uh, hey, uh, I, I saw that you were hanging out at such and such place, and then she pulls out her app on the phone and looks and goes, how come I can't see you? Yeah. So, well, daddy hangs out at places you probably don't that's need how, to know where daddy hangs out at. That's how it yeah. works. I pay for the app and the phone. Thus, that's right. you don't need to know my location, but I need to know yours. <laughs> this is a family, not a democracy. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All my friends and I have each other's locations, and we're always creeping like, ooh, what's Jessica doing at his house? Man, I can't imagine. That That really... I don't know. I I, I, did, I took my own privacy for granted as a kid, but boy, looking back, mm-hmm. going back to that eight, to the you know thinking about high school, college, just all through through my twenties, the last thing I would have wanted was to be able to be found ever. Yeah. I just I, you know there's just an idea of you, you, the first time I ever bought an answering machine, I was like, oh, this is it. I'm an adult now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can you you know you can't find me in real time, but I won't be able to say. I didn't know you called. You know, which, like suddenly I was like, oh man, this is this is getting way too restrictive. Um, Steve, do you want to share locations with me? No, I don't. Come on, what if someone steals me? I that's what that's what all your girlfriends are for. <laughs> Steve checks it like, why is Candace in my house? Why is she here? Yeah. <laughs> the Under your bed. She's in the basement. <laughs> oh my god, that's really really disturbing. I'm not not a fan of that at all. Um, Who? Yeah, uh, but uh, my I, <laughs> my nephew, uh, lovely guy, wouldn't mind me sharing this story. He he found himself in recovery a few years ago, and he went into a rehab facility. And when I first went to visit him, the first thing he said was, "Man, when's the last time you took a dump without your iPhone?" 
<laughs> Good to but see you. But it's that thing of like, yeah, you just take your phone everywhere. You know, you got to pass the time. He's like, yeah, they took my phone away. I don't know how to deal with it. And I remember my uh, my older brother Dave worked at a uh, at a facility in the mountains outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, in the Smoky Mountains. This was a facility where it was mostly like teenagers who would come with drug and alcohol problems. And it was kind of like a last stop. Like you'd already tried rehab and this was remote up in the mountains mm-hmm. and you moved in for some of these kids would be there six, eight, ten months, right? It was really heavy duty stuff. And he was one of the counselors and this is before cell phones. But what they would do is they, they, the kids would come in and they'd sit you in a room and they would say, there's no locks on the doors. You are free to come and go. We're not going to try to keep you here, but we're going to have to take all your shoes now. They confiscated all <laughs> the shoes, and they're mm-hmm. like, "The door's right there." And if you want to walk nine miles through the woods in the mountains without shoes, go for it. Yeah, yeah. And that's all they did. And those kids would be like, "Oh, okay," <laughs> like right away. And now I think to myself, uh, the average kid would happily give you their shoes or instead of their phone. Yeah, right. yeah. I would I would duct tape my iPhone to my foot. And walk with That's it that exactly. way there as compared go. to not being able there to not have go. a phone. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I I do use GPS anywhere I go. And it's for traffic purposes. The, the I use the Waze app. And so you see when the traffic's backing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but this year, for the first time, I've been doing a lot of driving without it because I'm trying to get to know the town. So mm-hmm. I'm just to make sure I kind of know where I am. But then at the same time, I'm like, but I always have the GPS. What does it matter? Like, I'm still going to have this. Like, when am I going to find myself like... Am I going to be in a situation where, like, I have to commandeer the ambulance and get it to that hospital, and right. I don't have my phone? That's never going to happen. No. You may be chased. You need to escape from something. That's very true. You might want to mm-hmm. know some, some local areas, mm-hmm. some back streets or something. <laughs> but, uh, no, as much as as much as much I would love to just laugh at kids who walk without phones and think they're making strides, yeah, I'm, I'm totally mm-hmm. hooked on my phone. <laughs> I think it was the director of uh, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. I'm based on the guy's name. But he did a thing where he went 30 days and just camped on the ocean. No phone, no electronics, no communication with uh-huh. nobody. And he did a test. Uh, he went and had blood work done before and after. And his, oh cholet- his cholesterol was, you know, it drops, you know, by 70%. Every- he had no stress, no anxiety. Yeah, he was just completely a changed guy, 30 days with no electronics. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You, we always justify, once you have kids, you're like, oh, I need this cell phone at all time. What if the kids need me? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, what if my parents, what if I had needed my parents? Well, yeah. I would have had to wait. You know, granted, something could come up where you needed to be there within nine minutes, you know, but that's pretty pretty much the exception. Yeah, people at movies, I can't turn it off because what happens if Nana passes away? Well, Nana's going to be dead after Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As soon as the movie's done, she ain't coming back. So yeah. just enjoy this for the next two hours. That's It's a tough one. Um, I, that, it's kind of like uh, looking back to when our son was first born, and I remember thinking, well, I don't have 12 hours to tap out for uh, for an acid trip anymore. So, gosh, that changes everything. Yeah, yeah so we're just going to take half the amount we usually Wait. take. I got six hours. No, that sound, those look like wonderful mushrooms, but I have a baby now. And I would really, and if something goes wrong and I'm tripping, it's going to be really bad. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, it's amazing how life changes. You know, you, we, we, we learn, we adapt, we evolve. That's how that goes. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you're missing any part of this show, you can always catch up with uh, with the KQ Morning Show podcast. Uh, there are, on occasion, in-depth interviews. We like to have a good time. Anywhere you get your podcasts, anytime you want. The KQ Morning Show podcast, sponsored by Devani's Pizza and Hot Hoagies. Candace, you're a big fan. Candace loves good some tasting. Devani's. Oh, sorry, I was on the phone. Yes, I love Devani's so much, um, always and forever. Candace was on the phone. That's exciting. You know who else needs to be on the phone? Uh, you, if you're interested in Queen and Adam Lambert tickets. We're taking callers 9 and 2 right now. 651-989-ROCK. The KQ talk and text line. Callers 9 and 2. Queen and Adam Lambert tickets. You're going to have to play a game to win them. We're going to have a good time. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip. Tony. Candace and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, October the 16th. Uh, Zepp is in England for the week. Rudy Pavich is hanging out with us in his stead. We're having a fine time. The Vikings got a win yesterday over the Chicago Bears. Suzanne Summers died Sunday morning. 
at the age of 76. Today is her 77th birthday. Mm -hmm. One day shy. She had been battling breast cancer on and off for 23 years. Man. Um, uh, there, and before that, had a big, a long time bout with skin cancer. So there is nobody whose life has not been touched by uh, a cancer journey of their own or by someone they care about deeply. So we can all certainly empathize, uh, her family and friends, uh, what they've all been through with her for years and years. Suzanne Summers just globally thought of as a wonderful person. I mean, you can't uh, seem to find anybody who had a bad thing to say about her. Um, just a, and and what an effervescent, uh, bubbly character she was on film. Yeah, yeah. She kept that sunny disposition too throughout. Always, yeah. Thigh master days, big mm -hmm. days for her. Oh yeah, built, had... literally built an empire on that thing. Did you ever use one? Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody's had a moment or two with a thigh master. Yeah. <laughs> My sister used one to beat me mercilessly in an alley with it. Right. Other than that, though, it never really made its way with a uh, you know an no. exercise. Yeah. <laughs> other than that, no. That's how she got her workout was just hitting me over the head with it. It's my mom's. <laughs> well, how whatever it takes. Yeah. It's the, the 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 thing is the thigh master. It's not just for the thighs. <laughs> <See? laughs> right. No. Uses a weapon as well. <laughs> That's exactly right. Hey, uh, Rudy, you said something about you saw a show down in chicago and mm -hmm. it was a queen gig it was mm. called tell me about this it was gaga and queen what was it again yeah it's called radio gaga it's a group uh, you know musicians from chicago uh -huh. i believe they're going to start taking this thing on the road a friend of mine who runs the venue had hit me up about it and said hey next time you're in town we should go check yeah. these guys out so it is a it's called radio gaga and it's a woman who plays lady gaga and then the band is queen and they they do a show as if Queen and Lady Gaga right. were, you know, if Queen was still around with Freddie Mercury, if they had done a concert together. Okay. Oh. So there's, yeah, it's great. They do all the Queen songs, and then Lady Gaga comes out, and then she sits down at a piano, and the guy who plays Freddie Mercury comes out and does all the, you know, the, the Lady Gaga songs, mm -hmm. and he kind of sits up on the piano with her. What a great concept. It's yeah. so much better than just be like, hey, I'm just going to go see the, whatever, the Quiet Riot tribute act. Yeah, or, you right, know, whatever right, right. it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's so much cooler that they're giving you an experience that cannot ever happen. Yeah, yeah. sure. What a, what a great concept. I would much rather have seen somebody give me a version of this than, uh, what was the thing that you had said, Steve? We were laughing about it. You're like, I'd rather go see that than, there was something else. I can't remember yeah. what it was, but you're right. I would rather go see somebody give me a rendition of what they think Lady Gaga mm -hmm. and the original Queen would have been like in a concert together. Great. I imagine I imagine that would be pretty strong. You know, uh, our, our dear friend Candace Wheeler is a singer in a great band called Sabotage. Really? Black Sabbath tribute band. Oh. Yeah, I and, just, um, yeah. we don't really do the whole, you know, if it would be like this thing, though. It's just no. a regular old. No, it's just <laughs> regular old Sabbath. But mm -hmm. but it's it's not the hits. It's They go deep into the catalog. Yeah. It's fantastic. Candice is great. But what did I say when I saw you, Candice? I said, I had an idea for, oh, yeah. for a, a mashup. Um, I said, why don't you, as a woman who loves Stevie Nicks, do Stevie with Sabbath? Call it the Black Mac. Oh, the Black <laughs> Mac. I like that. Yes. Black Mac. Stevie Nicks fronting cool. a Sabbath band. That would be some, see, <laughs> see. You got to get these combinations All right. together. Well, are you going to be my drummer or what? I will be the drummer in the band. Your drummer? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's Come take on. it easy. Come on, man. You scared? Are you going to be my singer? That's the question. <laughs> you That's can the do. ultimate question. Just go slowly. Just give him a tambourine <laughs> to warm up. As Charlie Watts said, as he punched Mick Jagger in the mouth once, I'm not your drummer. You're my singer. Don't ever forget. <laughs> oh, really? That's mm -hmm. a true story. No kidding. Yeah. I love Mick that. Mick was drunk and being silly and called him up. Uh, this is the story Keith told. They were in Amsterdam. It was like three in the morning. They're having a Mick on the rare drink up with the boys in the it's like in the 90s and he said let's get charlie up here and they're all like it's 4 a.m on a night off he's asleep and mick rings his hotel room and wakes him up he goes where's my drama and keith said charlie stood up got fully dressed suit tie the entire thing nice. dressed to the nines walked in the room and punched mick right in the mouth and said i'm not your drummer you're my singer never forget <laughs> I love it that Stud. Yeah, pretty the, great. The inner band squabbles that you don't get to hear about all yeah. the time. I, yeah, except except with the Rolling Stones, like Charlie Watts punching you in the mouth. I mean, and and this is no greater Charlie Watts fan than me. But literally, the guy's five six. He weighed one hundred and ten pounds. Yeah, it's it's not really going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You no, know, no, no. I'm sorry. That's just like it's like oh, slap. 
yeah. across your face. That's what it is. <laughs> well, the guy that he did hit could be used as a flag. Like, he's very yeah. wafy. That's I don't know. Mick Jagger is very, very thin. These are all very, very small men. Yeah. No question about it. Is it true that story about when it was a Paul McCartney and John Lennon were asked about Ringo Starr? Is that a true story when they said, uh, what do you say to the reports that Ringo is the best drummer in the world? And Paul said, Ringo's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. No, the line, mm-hmm. well, the story is that John Lennon said it. And then, but the truth is, if he did, it was a joke because they they all knew that Ringo Starr is the greatest rock and roll drummer of all time. And I will mm. fight physically really? anyone who argues that point, okay. especially you, Rudy. I see that look <laughs> on your face. I, I, don't, I don't know anything about Ringo other than other you know the Beatles and then some of the stuff that he did Every afterwards. drummer since owes him everything. Really? Yeah, he's the one. He's the first guy. No kidding. The Alpha did, and the Omega. No kidding. I had no idea. Now oh, yeah. you know. Right now on. you know. Is he the guy that you, I mean, obviously yes. I know you're a fan, but you're number you're one. Mo- no way. That's my guy. Wow. Who yeah, was yeah. number two? Uh, John Bonham. Yeah. Yeah. It's a way to do it. And then and then 96 different people are all number three. Karen yeah. Carpenter. Karen Carpenter is not on my list, although <laughs> she was actually a surprisingly good drummer. Yeah. Uh, but all this to say, this whole thing started with uh, Radio Gaga. Let's talk about Queen, the actual band Queen, who are performing with Adam Lambert sitting in, in this case of Freddie Mercury. You could do a lot worse than Adam Lambert. Yeah. That kid can sing. Who, baby? They're going to be at the XL Energy Center Friday, October 27th. And we got a couple tickets to give away right now. We've got a couple callers locked in and ready to play. Tony, what are we playing today? Let's play this fine game. Words and music. The lyrics. The lyrics. The lyrics. The lyrics. All lies. 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 These are all lies. All lies. Lyrics or lies. What we're going to do is read a set of words and you tell us, are they actual lyrics? From a song, or are they not? And of course, today we're going to focus on Queen songs. Beautiful. Yep. I love lyrics and lies. Let's do it, Candace. Who's contestant number one? We have Rebecca from Scandia. Rebecca, good morning. Good morning. Are you a Queen fan? I like to think I am. I'd like to think you are too, Rebecca. Let's see if you can uh, get through this case of lyrics or lies for tickets. Tony, take it away. Let's go, Becca, number one. So you think you can stone me and spit in my eye? So you think you can love me and leave me to die? Lyrics or lies? Yes, Queen's lyrics. Damian Rhapsody. Bang. Becca, number two. Caviar and cigarettes, well-versed in etiquette, extraordinarily nice. No. Oop! From, from Killer Queen. Killer Queen! How did I not know? Rebecca. I make fun of people doing bad on radios, and now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> we won't this. mock you. All you right. Got this. Number three. Are you ready? Are you ready for some football? All my rowdy friends are here on Monday night. <laughs> no. Yes. That a girl. <laughs> Two more. Number four. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do for a Klondike bar? No. Strong. Oh, no. Strong. <laughs> I was even singing in my head. Klondike bar. I would have plane tickets. You have a lovely voice. <laughs> yeah. All right, Becca, your last one. But it's been no bed of roses, no pleasure cruise. I consider it a challenge before the whole human race, and I ain't going to lose. Yes. We yes, are it the is. champions. Yes. Wow. Oh, Four right, for Becca. five, Rebecca. Well done. Speaking of mashups, now I'm dying to see a band of Queen, uh, but with Bo Cephas singing. <laughs> Hank Jr. <laughs> Hell yeah. This song's about fat-ass women. Wait, what's it called? Oh, Fat Bottom Girls. My bad. <laughs> All right, Rebecca, four for five. Very well played. Let's go on to contestant number two. Candace, who we got? Jessica from Coon Rapids. Jessica, good morning. Good morning. You a Queen fan? Yes, and my 12-year-old daughter is a huge Queen fan. Oh, well, right on. Maybe uh, maybe you'll be able to take her if you win these tickets. It's Absolutely. lyrics. It's lyrics or lies. Good luck to you. Okay. All right, let's go, Jess. Number one, I got to be cool, relax, get hip, and get on my tracks. Um, yeah. Yes, crazy little thing oh, called love. I got to be good. <laughs> oh, really? Relax. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. it. <laughs> just number two, let them eat cake, she says, just like Marie Antoinette. Yes. Bang. Killer Queen. 
Number three, Mama looked down and spit on the ground every time my name gets mentioned. Papa said, Oi, if I get that boy, I'm going to stick him in the house of detention. Hmm. I feel like you're trying to trick me with maybe one word or something, but... Oh, man. I wouldn't okay, do I'm that. Say no. Correct. That is Paul Simon, me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> she thought she was being hoodwinked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, two more, Jess. Number four. Well, they say your folks are telling you to be a superstar, but I tell you, just be satisfied. Yes. Right. Keep yourself alive. Wow. Four for four. This is it for the <laughs> win, Jessica. Here's your last All one. Right. How come you're always such a fussy young man? Don't want no Cap'n Crunch. Don't want no Raisin Bran. <laughs> well, don't you know the other kids are starving in Japan? So eat it. No, that no. That is eat it by Weird <laughs> yeah. Al Yankovic. Wow. You did it. Wow, Jessica d- d- almost got tripped up by Weird Al. Not mm-hmm. something we say every day around here. <laughs> but I uh, knew it was weird. <laughs> Well done. Five for five, Jessica. You got two tickets to see uh, Queen and Adam Lambert, 27th of October at the XL Energy Center. Rebecca, four for five, a great effort. Not enough for the Queen tickets. However, you will not go home empty-handed. Rumors of Fleetwood Mac is playing at Treasure Island Event Center the same night, Friday, October 27th. And you got tickets to see that, so have a great time. Thank you. You got it. Thanks. Wow. Nice. You know what I took away from that? I don't think I'm as big of a Queen fan as I thought I was, because I thought I knew a lot of Queen, and some of those on that uh, that second contestant with Jessica, I was a little lost. I didn't remember some of those. Mm. So, but man, uh, the mustache, yeah. the voice. I'm excited to yeah. go to that show. Be I've awesome. seen it before with Adam Lambert, and it was awesome. And they really do uh, make Freddie the focus. Right. And it's uh, really special. I definitely cried during Love of My Life. Did you? Aww. Yeah. Cry, baby. Yeah. As long as you got Brian May up there and you got uh, Roger Taylor on the kit, it's going to be good. And I mean, no, listen, no disrespect to bassist John Deacon, but come on, he's the bassist. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. I'm a drummer. Did yeah. either of you guys see Queen when they had Freddie Mercury? Um, no, but thanks for mentioning that I had tickets in 1978 that went unused. No. Wow. Where, where were oh, they at? Uh, Nashville, Tennessee at the Municipal Auditorium. It was Thanksgiving night and we had tickets. My older sister was going to drive us, and there was a medical issue. She could not, and neither one of my parents stepped up to say, oh, that's okay, we'll take you. It was a 50, no, sorry, 70-mile drive, oh. and uh, it was like, after Thanksgiving, we're not going to drive and drop you off and sit there for two hours while you enjoy a concert, because why would we do that? You're just our child. <laughs> but I'm over it now. Yeah, right. So thanks for mentioning it. Very welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I didn't see Queen with Freddie Mercury. Oh. Really wish I had. Uh, you, I'm assuming you did not as a very no. small child. No, yeah, I never. No, some of the originals I never had an opportunity to see. First concert you ever saw, what was it? Uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Hennepin Avenue. Really? Yeah, sm- there was with, and then the next day was the, oh, we, we talked about this off air, was the OzFest Warp Tour combo at Somerset, Wisconsin. That's your first uh, weekend first, of live music. Yeah, I, uh, wow. I, I borrowed my sister's car. Me and two girls that I went to high school with came down and uh, talk about different times because I had just turned, I think, 16. Mm-hmm. And we took a car, drove all the way down from Hibbing to, to downtown Minneapolis, yeah. stayed at uh, the frat, one of a, a frat house. On University Row, on Frat yeah. Row at the U yeah. of M, and then the next day drove to Somerset, Wisconsin, watched the concerts, turned around, drove home that that night, and my daughter is right now at that same age, and I I barely let her walk to Walgreens across the street, yeah, sure. let alone take a vehicle and then drive down to go see. Con- but I think it was just the 25th year anniversary of that concert or something like that. Mm. Uh, the Smashing Pumpkins on Hennepin Avenue, and wow. if you've never seen the photos, Steve, you got to look at them. They, it really was a spectacle. It was awesome. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, the whole downtown Minneapolis was completely taken over. I mean, yeah, thousands they, of people. Yeah, they, oh, really? They thought it was going to be, you know, whatever, maybe, you know, maybe 20,000 people. I think like 100,000 people oh, okay. turned out for it. The yeah. whole thing. It's, it was big, yeah. Fair enough. OzFest, Candace? 
Uh, no, Steve. Thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> just, I heard, I heard a <laughs> over there. Yeah, so I make a lot of noises. Um, no, I wish. Yeah, yeah, sure do. Okay, well, fair enough. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sorry that you didn't have a chance to uh, take in Ozfest, uh, but I do know this. I'm sure there's been a time when you wanted to be like Ozzy, and so you tried to drink your weight in beer over the course of a day <laughs> or maybe a weekend. Uh, there's a guy in England who's trying to break a world record. For the most pints consumed in a short amount of time, you're going to want to hear these numbers. It's pretty impressive. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. In 30 minutes, Robert Smith, the Vicon, as I call him, Vikings icon and hell of a nice guy, is going to call in and talk about the Vikings. They got a win yesterday over the Bears. I believe Robert was, in fact, on the call Mm -hmm. for Fox Television. He did so a good got, job. A lot of people were comparing him to Tony Romo because he was so uh, right on in his predictions and facts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a he's a he's a great broadcaster and a super bright guy, and he's going to give us all the reasons we'll need to pin our hopes on the fact that the Vikings. Well, that I'm, who am I kidding? They're not going to beat the Niners next week, but we'll see. Oh, oh gosh, what was I talking about? Uh, Robert Smith in thirty minutes. Uh, uh, Rudy Pavich is sitting in with us today. Pavich, I almost said Pavich. Pavich is sitting in with us today, Brian. And Zepp is, go figure, in London for a week. Cheerio. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I can't, can't say we're sending our best and brightest. I mean, sorry, <laughs> Zepp. Oh, I kid. Oh, I kid. You. Uh, while he's in England, uh, if he finds himself going to Sheffield, England, maybe he'll look up a dude named John May. John May is uh, quickly becoming a heroic figure on the World Wide Web. Okay, I don't know about you. Uh, there are times in life when I think to myself, how much of this could I possibly ingest? <laughs> like, say, the time I was told there's no way you could eat six bean burritos from Taco Bell. I was in probably 10th grade, and I will let you know I had seven and wow. felt awesome for uh-huh. about an hour and then was just dying. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, don't challenge me back in the day. Don't sure. tell me I can't eat six bean burritos from Taco Bell. What was the time frame? That you consume those. Sit down and just go. I oh, mean, it's man. not like over an hour. Yeah. No, like in the case of a normal meal, you just got to hoover mm-hmm. them down. And I did it, and I made it happen. Um, and and what I got for it was I didn't have to pay for them. That was the reward. <laughs> was It was just I got sick for free mm-hmm. is what that means. Yeah. You didn't have to pay that $2.76 for seven burritos. Yeah, what does it say that Taco Bell's prices really haven't changed no. over the uh-huh. years? It's mm-hmm. like I don't think it means the quality of the food's gone up. No. <laughs> uh, but that's just me. Uh, when I was a freshman in college on the floor, I moved into a dorm, and I was on the 25th floor of a big dorm at Western Kentucky, uh, Pierce Ford Tower. And when you would walk off the elevator, there were big letters painted on the wall, FUBAR, which is an acronym that mm-hmm. many people have heard of, effed up beyond all recognition. That was on the wall. And I was like, huh. And one of the Things I learned was if you want to call yourself a proud member of FUBAR, you have to have a thousand ounce weekend, which meant from Friday at noon until Monday at like 6 a.m., you had to drink a thousand ounces of beer. <laughs> Great. And then you do the math, and that's 40 some odd beer. It's not. It's not in- inconceivable. You start at noon on Friday, and it's a uh, you know it's it's 40 like I said 40. It's less than 50 beers. Mm-hmm. It's in the 40s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried once, didn't make it. Wasn't a big beer drinker at that time, and just tapped out early. So I was like, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was that was a little bit. That was that was beyond the pale for me. Right? Didn't have it. Didn't have that ace in the sleeve. Uh, years later, ten years later, in 1993, dur- I talked myself into a wager. I said I could drink 24 Coors Lights during a Super Bowl. I did that easily. Wow. Well, that yeah. says it says a lot for me. Probably mm-hmm. not all positive, but that wasn't a problem. Light beer at that taste, you sure. know. So, so yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is, I'm kind of an idiot, and sometimes I decide to see if I can do something <laughs> that someone says I can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which brings us back to John May of Sheffield, England, who has gone so far above and beyond anything in my greatest moment I could have ever imagined possible. This guy has decided he's going to drink 2,000 pints of beer. Now, a British pint is more, it's, I, I believe that's 16 ounces. So that's more than a bottle or a can. 2,000 pints in 200 days. Hmm. That's 10 a day okay. for 200 straight days. Oh. Oh. 
10 beers in a day? Sure. Mm. 10 beers the next day? Okay. But mm. the third day, at yeah. the height of my <laughs> drinking prowess, the third day would have been a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, they say that about morning radio. It's not the first day. It's not <laughs> really the second day. It's the third day that you have yeah. a hard time getting up out of bed. Yeah. See, I, I, I noticed it's more like month 10 like right now. <laughs> yeah. But that's just me. So my man is going two thousand pints in 200 days uh and he's follow and you can follow along on tiktok as he's doing it now now to his you know to, to if you're wondering how it's possible this man is only 25 years old okay so he's got that going for him he yeah. said i'm too young to have hangovers if you're drinking 10 full pints a day for 200 straight days and you're not hung over, you may have a problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I know it sounds ridiculous to have that many beers, but I'm kind of doing the math. And not that I would want to try it, but, you know, I mean, I, if I'm kind of at a moment where I have nothing going on, I'm not mm -hmm. traveling, I'm at home, I, have, yeah. I don't have to get it. I'll drink three tall boys a night. Sure. No problem. Right. You know, every day yeah. for the week probably. Mm -hmm. But and I think it's kind of classy to have three beverages. You don't drink it during the day. You yeah. just wait till you get home at night. Then yep. you have a nice, you know, whatever. But 10 feels a little much. But at 25, that's when you that's when you should be doing that stuff. Well, I, when I was 25, I was on a tour bus. And I was not ever responsible for that bus getting yeah. anywhere mm -hmm. uh, on time or safely. I was just sitting in, in comfort. And I could drink a lot and did. But but here's the thing. Were there were there weeks where I averaged ten beers a day? Absolutely. Sure, yeah. But again, we're talking two hundred days in a row. Mm -hmm. Never. I've never been a guy I've never woken up and immediately had a drink. Like, I I need a drink now. It's like mm -hmm. If I if I have a, if I tie one on, I don't want to get near it the next day. I've just always been me. I've yeah. always been hungover. I I would be concerned if I stopped having hangovers. Yeah. Well, I have a clip here of John May explaining why he decided to do this and tracking his progress on a TikTok video. So I'm going to have to prop up the UK economy. And I thought the best way I can try and give some money to the UK economy is to drink a lot of alcohol. We're smashing this. We need an average 5.4. We're on average of 5.7. Yesterday at 7. Today, a bit of football, so we're going to go to the pub and we are going to smash this out of the park. We're going to try and do maybe eight, nine, probably ten, and then we're nice, happy days. <laughs> okay, that explains a lot, actually. <laughs> as soon as I heard his voice, I was like, oh, sure, yeah, this is a guy... <laughs> Yeah, he, he he doesn't have a lot else going on, does he? Oh, I'm watching the uh, Beckham documentary on Netflix right now. There's yeah, just four... watched it over the weekend. Oh, you did? Okay, Fantastic. yeah. Yeah, I'm a little over halfway through it, and the soccer hooligans are on a different level. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sure. The drinkers, the, you know, there's guys at the pub who aren't even in the stands, no shirt on, just Dude. in the bar with no shirt. Sure. I, I've I've seen a lot Uh and and the 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 soccer the drinking culture around the game of football uh, that I've experienced in the United Kingdom is it's a whole nother yeah. it is another planet. I've gone to see Arsenal is my team. I've been to many matches over the years, and you take the tube, and as you come up the steps from the tube station, there's a uh, at, at one of the stops at the old station Highbury. There's a pub right there at the top of the stairs, and I have gotten off that tube at 10 a.m. And the the stairs are already just coated in yeah. vomit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like the, there's already there's six seven people sitting on the floor on the ground outside the pub, leaning up against the wall. They've already passed out. <laughs> it's 10 a.m. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff. I'm an hour early for the game, but these guys are already that drunk, yeah. and they're professional drinkers. Raiders fans are like, "Why are you guys starting so late?" Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 8 a.m. Let's do this. Pretty incredible. Uh, but so, yeah, so, dude, um, 200. Be yeah, that's still again, though, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's a, yeah, it's funny you say about day three of morning radio. Day, just pick any random day of 10 beers, you know, day 106. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm just past the halfway point. <laughs> oh, I don't know if there's through. anything I like enough to be able to do yeah. it for 2,000 times in a row. For yeah, they, I, 200 just, days of for, something. Yeah, I, there's no way. I mean, for you know, I, the only thing I can think of is like the way my daughter feels about Taylor Swift. If I was like, you must listen to Taylor Swift for mm -hmm. 10 hours a day for 200 days, she's like, done, I already do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah.
I remember when uh, the the whole, the word hit the street that Sting was having sex for eight hours, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, not even that. Sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, um, good, good on you. Good breathing technique, but seriously, sorry. I don't think that's going to happen." Candace, I believe yes. we have a phone, uh, a caller, I should say, who wanted to share something. Sarah from Finlayson. Sarah, good morning. Good morning. What do you got for us? Well, I just wanted to make the comment that, uh, so my son is uh, an ADHD child, and uh, he's been like this his entire existence, pretty much, and I've just realized that um, I make compensations for him every single morning, get him up an hour extra, and he still can figure out how to say, but mom, I need more time, I need more time. And I'm like, well, we can go to bed earlier for you. And he just, of course, was like, what? Go to bed earlier? Mm -hmm. I need to stay up later. And it's a morning thing. So I definitely don't have any sympathy for time blindness for adults when I have a child who's doing it already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boy, that's a lot to take in. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you really got it off your chest right there. You feel better? so much. (laughs) Yes, completely. I'm not alone. We all struggle. I hear you. All right. Well, thank you for the call. Appreciate you listening. Hmm? See, look at us just helping people out. Did I? Did I miss a? a, a did Did I talk about something I've already Briefly. forgotten? About? Did we? What did we? Do, what was the conversation, Candace? Help me out um, about time blindness. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. Yeah, get her back on the horn and see if she wants to make I think any she's reference. Willing to come. Yeah. Maybe it's tied in with getting up early. And yeah, doing that's morning what, radio. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Perhaps. Maybe I think she's just giving you crap. Okay, well, wow. You just wanted to say hi. <laughs> no, that's nice. That's time nice. blindness, though. I'm going to use that excuse from now on. It's, honey, you know I have time blindness. It's a condition. <laughs> sorry I didn't want to go to your sister's bar mitzvah. I'm sorry. I just saw, by the way, also over the weekend, I did watch the Beckham documentary. It's fascinating. I was just so happy eventually his voice did get lower. Because, you know, oh. he's, when he was young, I remember him in the 90s, like, well, we had a good game out there against Man City. And I used to think, dude, just fake it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, fascinating story, to be sure. And I'm a big soccer guy, so I remembered all of it, but I had forgotten all of it. Like, as I was watching, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, pretty crazy uh, what my man has endured and been through in his life. Um, I also saw over the weekend... Uh, the, somebody referenced that we're going to set the clocks back again in a couple of weeks. And I thought, like, for the love of God, didn't we already? I I really thought we had, uh, that the, a law had been passed where they were stopping that. And that wasn't it at all. We just discussed the fact that someone's trying to get that law yeah, done. we talked about perhaps mm-hmm. doing it. We're, we're still moving clocks around yeah. in the spring and fall. Um, and, I, and I've said for years, I don't care which one. Just pick one and stick with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, mm-hmm. uh, I'll adjust accordingly. I'm just trying to. I just want to get a couple more rounds of golf in. Is that so much to ask for? Yeah, pick the one that keeps the sun out the longest. That's that's the time we should be on. We can do that. Yeah, or just you know what? Just 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 take a like like just give us two seven a.m.s in a day. Whatever it takes. I don't care. Mm-hmm. They also me. they also do it every year on Minnesota deer hunting opener. Do you know how hard it is for men to do math? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is? Like, okay, wait a minute. So if I was waking up at 4 a.m. on Friday, and Saturday, so Saturday, so what, what, you have no idea when you're supposed to go out in the woods. No. Oh, God. That must be awful. Yeah. I can't even, I, I literally can't imagine because I don't hunt. So no. there you have it. Yeah. You? Are you still into those kind of things? Yeah, I love it. I was just really? duck hunting last weekend. Uh, I'm heading up uh, next week. I'll be on Lake Winnipegosh next weekend uh, for three days hunting and then come back. And then I go on the road. And then after I get back, uh, deer hunting starts. Wow. So, so yeah. what are you hunting next week, though? Ducks again. Ducks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn ducks. Yeah. I, ducks. That is the th- I do have a little bit of an in- internal struggle with the duck. Really? Yeah, because they're just, they're they're birds. They're, they don't do anything. Deer, I understand. You know, they're, they're if you don't have management control, bad things can happen with the deer population. Sure, sure. But, but ducks, you just, yeah. they, they hang out in ponds. You throw them bread, you know, like yeah. they're, they're cool. Right. So, so there are times where if we have not shot any ducks and a duck does fly in, I'm just like, just let him go. Just let him what, go. Are we going to take one duck home? I'm, no. I'm just having a good time sitting in the blind. I don't need to shoot anything. You don't want to be the guy who comes home with one duck. No. <laughs> no we've all been that guy. Don't be that guy. Mm. Uh, that guy, Robert Smith, is going to call us uh, up here on the KQ Morning Show. We're going to discuss the Vikings win, and we will look ahead as we like to do. The great Robert Smith at 9 o'clock. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 
92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, October the 16th. Vikings got a win yesterday over the Chicago Bears. Robert Smith phoning in in just a minute or two to discuss. He was on the call for Fox uh, TV yesterday. A win is a win, especially in a league where you only have 17 games in a season. I'm still not used to saying 17, but I'll get used to it before, uh, you know, it's all said and done. Uh, a win is a win, especially in division. So well done, Vikings, on that uh, count. Uh, Rudy Pavich is sitting in with us. Brian Zepp is in London for the week. Sports growing up. Rudy, what'd you play? Uh, let's see. Uh, I had to play sports because I had been busted too many times smoking and drinking in high school. Really? Yeah, so I had to make it up. In fact, up until, I think like up until a couple of years ago, I held the record for most weeks made up in a sport because you have to practice with the sport, mm-hmm. but then you're not allowed to play in any of the games. Oh, man. So, yeah. Uh, but I played football. I was terrible at it. Uh, we were so we had no depth on the team. So I started as a senior, but then about four games in, they gave the spot to a freshman because that, that's how bad I was. What'd you was play? All, I, I played because uh, I'm a tiny guy. Yeah. Uh, I played. Let's see, I was a defensive back, but I'm slow. I was so slow. And I wish somebody at that point would have pulled me aside and been like, "Dude, you, this is not your thing. Go be in the place." Pick up a guitar, <laughs> go do theater, go do yeah. anything else besides put on a football helmet because you are awful at this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I played you know, the typical, when I was younger, like seventh grade, played soccer, yeah. stuff like that. Attaboy. So, yeah. Attaboy. All right. So you're watching the Beckham doc over the weekend. You're going, well, it could have been me. Could have been me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except uh, I can't kick a ball. I have no talent. My wife is not that hot. Uh, she is, don't get me wrong, I don't have a wife. So hang on before everybody's like, wow, you just. Saying terrible things about your about your wife. Um, no, listen, no. self awareness is key in any room. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I I like the sport. I'm just now starting to come around on soccer. I had the U.S. mentality of this is what yeah. we send our kids, so I don't have to watch them in the summer. So uh, was, but yeah. I'm starting to move around. I kind of dig soccer a little all bit. Right. I like the drinking aspect. Okay, fair yeah. enough. It all you just got to have you got to get a toehold in there, whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. Uh, joining us right now on the KQ Morning Show, Robert Smith is on the horn, as he is every Monday at this time. Robert, good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Uh, all good on this end, brother. So you actually took in your first Vikings game in person yesterday in Chicago. Vikings with the big win. Uh, what, what's your main takeaway? What's what's one thing you saw yesterday where you can say, hey, you can hang your hat on this? Hmm. That's a really good that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, this sounds like a cop out, uh, but I would say effort. I mean, you know, you look at the turnovers uh, in the game yesterday, and you know, when when guys are just working hard, you know, you get pressure from the defensive line, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, Josh Mantellus had the strip, almost a strip sack. Uh, Fumble return for a touchdown. Didn't quite get that one. Jordan Hicks was able to pick that ball up. Uh, but guys were they were they were playing with a lot of effort. And when you do that, you try and get home. Uh, you had the one ball tipped up into the air that Justin Fields threw, which led to an interception. And you know, in speaking to Brian Flores and the Harrison Smith on uh, on Saturday, you know, we it, w- the way that they saw it was that. that it, these things were going to finally happen for them. They had come close so many times uh, to making plays, especially defensively, that those that eventually it was going to happen. And that's kind of what revealed itself, I think. And uh, you know, averages have a tendency to average out <laughs> you yeah, know, when you're right. when you're not when you're giving up a bunch of of turnovers and not getting a lot. Then, generally speaking, moving forward, you're going to start giving up less and uh, and getting more i mean that's right. kind of the way that things work out so, that, well um, it, that's i've i've always seen that to be the case except for when i'm at the blackjack table <laughs> <laughs> that that's when you know eventually i stop blackjack, doubling down and realize black, i just got to leave blackjack it, def, it defies all uh, models of statistics there's no question <laughs> no doubt about it so that's a big win um i was watching yesterday too it's interesting you take a guy like Justin Jefferson out, and I think there's a conventional thought that, oh, everyone else is going to get a lot of catches now. It doesn't make it any easier for the other receivers when the big man's off the field, does it? 
No, it certainly doesn't. And, you know, there are a couple of different ways to look at it. I mean, you know, defenses are designed, most of them, they're not going to, they're not going to play Justin Jefferson straight up. <laughs> they're going to tilt. They're going to rotate their coverage. Uh, you know, they're going to try and find ways to get an extra defender over him. And based on where he's lined up and kind of what the formation is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you try, you try and get some guys uh, an opportunity to catch balls and, and other guys are going to catch more balls because because he's on the field. Right. Now, when he's off the field, they can play more balanced. Uh, but from a play calling perspective, it's a little bit more predictable um, because there are only so many guys like that in the league. So, you know, what a defense is going to do is not as easy to predict. You know, how a team lines up against a regular trips formation or quads or, uh, you know, a, a, tighter sets, condensed formations where, uh, you know, he's in one of those bunch sets or stacked, you know, all of those kind of things, they modify the way that they play when he's out there. So uh, they have a little bit better idea uh, from what, or uh, of what defense are going to do. But from there, guys have got to get open, right? And guys have still got to catch the ball. I thought it was good to see TJ Hawkinson rise up and make some plays after some drops the week mm-hmm. four. Uh, but yeah, guys, just have to go out and and make plays cousins has been uh, lighting it up statistically yesterday only 181 yards but enough to get the job done on the other side of the field what do you think of justin fields um because he is a guy uh an all uh, like yourself a buckeye uh boy there seems to be such disparate thoughts people think he is uh the right guy in the wrong system or the wrong guy in the wrong system where do you stand on Fields so far well you know, over the last the the, the two weeks heading into uh, the game yesterday, you know, it was against the Broncos and against the Commanders. So you're you're talking about two of the worst pass defenses. Uh, you know, he looked fantastic, uh, and but a big a big part of that was run after the catch from DJ Moore. I mean, he had 230 yards receiving against the Commanders. I think 150 of it was after the catch, which is amazing. But He's gotten better, it seems, with feeling more comfortable in the pocket, anticipating throws, delivering with accuracy. But you know, it's it's like your golf game, right? Or it's like a marriage. You know, it's 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 not how good you are at your best. It's how bad things get at your worst that really define success. Uh, You know, I'll I'll go to the driving range and look like I might make the U.S. Open. You know, but I'll get out on the course and you know, and like literally shank shots right so uh that's the problem with justin is that you know before he left the game yesterday i you know we we diagrammed this one in the game like he had a receiver wide open right in front of him and didn't deliver the ball Mm -hmm. and normally you know you you, you, when i when i sit up there at least I'm, i'm trying to say look i know i'm in the press box so it's hard to tell what he sees and what the pressure around him is uh, or how it's affecting him. No pressure around him, clean pocket, clean shot to DJ Moore, doesn't throw the ball and mm-hmm. ends up, uh, you know, is, is trying to escape the pocket. I think it might have been the play he got hurt on. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, he, he seems to have it at times and, and not at times, which is a real problem. Robert Smith is with us on the KQ Morning Show. Uh, Kirk Cousins uh, credited the fact with the the team listened to a song by Creed before the game yesterday. Uh, And I'd like to get your thoughts on the music of Creed, Robert. Is this a problem? Is this something we should be concerned with moving forward? Well, it it was higher, right? Yeah, sure was. I, I don't I don't understand I don't understand why uh, <laughs> he, he feels that I, I need to check that and you know it's funny I saw a reference uh, to that mm-hmm. uh, like just flipping through social media I haven't actually did is did he really say that like it was it tongue in cheek or they what? They, they they did play the song. He did say that it got them fired up. And then he also went on to say that Creed has a deep catalog. Those were his words. So, you know, there might be more Creed in the locker room moving forward. I can't imagine that's a unanimous vote from that team. Yeah, and I, I definitely can't name another Creed song. <laughs> that's and right. What? Like, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just off the top of my head, I'm not saying that I don't know any other sure. songs, but educate me. What, what am I missing out on? Uh, who, I'd rather not. Um, so, 
Who picked the music in the locker room back in the day? Uh, you know, when you're on your Vikings teams, was there music played before a game? And if so, who chose it? No, thankfully, Denny Green liked to have. If you if you were listening to music in the locker room, you had to have headsets on. Yeah. Oh boy, that, that was it. That was my style. And it's funny, man. Like when I first got in the league, like it was it was Nine Inch Nails and Public Enemy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like mm-hmm. it was, it, you know, get your heart heart rate going and you know get your adrenaline flowing but you know you don't you don't want adrenaline dump right like you don't want to get into games and right uh you know you get so wound up before you get out there and then you know you, you can kind of have a letdown uh when you get you know when you actually get on the field so by the time i was you know out of the league i was literally listening to aretha franklin sings the blues <laughs> and nice. like african lullabies not, yeah I'm not kidding Oh, that's fantastic. It makes perfect sense. Um, Robert, you mentioned talking to Brian Flores on Saturday. How much time do you get with each team on a weekend? You're going in for the game with Fox on Saturday. Are you getting into uh, no, town? We go in, we go in on, we normally go in on either Thursday night or Friday morning because uh-huh. we watch practice of the home team on Friday. Mm-hmm. Then we visit with the team. Uh, and, you know, we'll normally have head coach, offensive, defensive coordinators, uh, and a couple players. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, on Saturday when the visiting team gets in town, we'll go to their, their hotel and, and sit with their players. Okay. Do you, have you and had coaches. the experience and I won't ask you to name names, but have you had the experience where like, say you sit through the home team's practice, you pick up on things and then you sit down and talk to them and as they're explaining their mindset and 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 what they're hoping to accomplish, you're just thinking to yourself, "I just saw it. You're, you're totally trying to spin me. You're full of crap." You know? D- d- oh no, no, no and, and 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 no. And the reason is they don't really do anything on Fridays, right? Okay. Uh, there's not there's not a whole lot. It's just it's just kind of good to just kind of get a feel. You know, a vibe. You know right. what I mean. Uh, just kind of being out there. There are some things that we'll see. You know, who's if 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 there's somebody who's questionable. Sometimes you'll see that person, but you're not going to go and, and and tell those things. And you know, we're we're not the media. We're their broadcast partners, right? Got it. Like Got so, it. Um, we're not we're not out there to break stories. We're just trying to get a feel for the teams. And um, you know, I I always like to, like to say that too. Like when we're doing our interviews, like you know, if there's something that you even said that you want to make sure that I, you know, don't you just let just let us know. Like we're Got not it. we're not we're 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 trying to get as much inside information as we can to help us make it a better broadcast without revealing state secrets. Right? Gotcha. <laughs> it's just, it's, that's not why we're there. <laughs> that makes perfect sense, Robert. Uh, the uh, the the San Francisco Forty ers surprisingly, at least to me, lost yesterday at Cleveland. That defense for Cleveland is serious. Uh, but it certainly did enough to keep the, the, I mean, a missed field goal. They could have had the game won. But right. suffice to say, what looked it like. Michigan, it was a Michigan kicker too, right? Listen, hold on. First of all, <laughs> my affiliation with the Michigan football program is, uh, is, is, is nothing I had a choice in, okay? I'm just going to say that right off the bat here. Um, yes, it was, as these things happen. Uh, but here's okay. the deal. Uh, the Niners seemingly invincible for five weeks, and then they they come up short yesterday, and now they come here for a Monday night game. Um, did you did you get a chance to see any of the highlights? Did you see anything in the Niners that you think the Vikings can look at and go, "Oh, okay, we've learned something from this. This is a way to attack that team." No, well, I mean, with Debo Samuel being injured and right. uh, you know uncertain, and then you know with Christian McCaffrey, same thing, like. That can happen to any team, but I, I think the the big part of of yesterday was was those big surprises, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, who who's thinking that uh, you know that. Uh, the the Giants are going to be in it against Buffalo, or that you know the Jets are going to be able to beat the Eagles for the first time ever. Right? <laughs> yeah, pretty damn cool. It's pretty right? nuts. Like, who thinks that those things are going to? But that's like, it, it, people think, oh yeah, that's just something you stay any given Sunday. No, that's real. Like, it's, uh, it's 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 very real. There are a lot of good players on every team. A lot of teams have trouble putting it all together from time to time. There's no doubt about that. Or doing it consistently, but 
uh, on on any given Sunday, quite literally, especially if you know, one injury here or there, uh, anything can happen. And I, you know, nothing would surprise me now. And you know, the good thing for the Vikings, I mean, you know, yesterday was the first division game, so you know, you've literally yeah. got, uh, you know, you've literally got. Uh, your destiny in your own hands. That's mm-hmm. that's the way that you want. Yeah, a road division win, no matter no matter what the records say, is always is always a good thing, and it's an important thing. Robert, last last note. Okay, so yesterday the Bears honored Dick Buckus, of course, their first home game since he died. Buckus, one of the most feared players in league history. Who was the guy in your career? Did you ever get hit by someone and say, okay, uh, note to self, never go near that man again. No, no, it was, no? it was never like that. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you're never scared of anybody. They're just people that you wouldn't put on the top. Well, well now, hold on. No, I'm scared of wanna... plenty of people. You're never scared of people. <laughs> no, I'm scared of all kinds of people. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> I mean, on a football field. Gotcha. Between the lines, yeah. There's, yeah. yeah there's certain people off the field that don't want to go anywhere near. But, um, you know, Reggie White was a guy. <laughs> um yeah. You know, just, I mean, he was just so much stronger and, and bigger than, and like, he's ragdolling offensive linemen. And it's so like, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. And I remember the first time that I lined up and, and, uh, you know, had an opportunity or, uh, you know, had the misfortune of being like in his way, uh, you know, he, he ran over my guy, uh, Big K, Corey Stringer. Um, and that's the only reason that he didn't get a sack is that running over Corey slowed him down enough that by the time he got to me, I was able to get in the way enough yeah. uh, for him not to get a sack. But yeah, you know, I got, I got hit in the, I got hit and got the wind knocked out of me, um, by the Cowboys, and I can't remember if it was Darren Woodson or it was Brock Marion. That was prop. that's like the hardest hit, uh, that I took where I was just, you know, I, and oh. it's funny. I had never had the wind knocked out of me, um, which is funny. You know, I'm whatever, 22 or 23 years old at that point. Oh, you probably thought you were dying. <laughs> I, it, I literally thought I was dying. <laughs> yeah. I, and, I don't, and I don't know why they don't tell you that on day one of football, <laughs> that you might get the wind knocked out of you. You might feel like you're dying, but relax. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to catch your breath. I'm on the I'm on the field, and I'm, I, I, you know, was standing up, and I'm like... <clears throat> And I'm, I'm like trying to breathe yeah. and, you know, finally catch my breath. And I'm walking to the sideline laughing and everybody, they, I get to the sideline. They're like, why are you laughing? I'm like, I, you know, 15 seconds ago, I thought I was going to die on national TV. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's a, I, I, I got that one out of the way early in life. I don't remember the situation, but I don't remember not knowing what that feels like. It's terrible at any age, but yeah, I would imagine on the field in the NFL, if you're ever going to feel like the breath taken out of you is your last breath, that's that's when that would actually check out. Yeah, that would that would make sense. <laughs> Robert, it's always our pleasure, Bye. brother. What where are you headed this weekend? Uh, actually, I'm headed. To, uh, I have a college game this weekend, and I don't know my next my next NFL game will be the following week, but I'm not sure what game it is yet. It hasn't been assigned. All right, gotcha. Well, uh, we always look forward to talking to you, brother. Thanks. All right. Talk See to you ya. later. Right on. Zepp is in London for the week. Uh, Rudy Popich has been with us all morning. He's going to continue to be with us. Uh, thank you, brother. It's been nice. Yeah, thank you, guys. I, I, hmm. I love hanging out with you. And this is the first time I met Candace. Uh, I, I know Steve and I, we met uh, at the Jay Moore Show. At we did House meet at the Jay Moore Show. And then uh, Tony I've known forever. Uh-huh. And then we all uh, ran into each other at... Uh, Cesario. Uh, Cesario. That's right. Jeff Cesario yeah. at Acme. And it just, it's kismet. It was like meant to be. We were all supposed to hang out, you know? Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> Could have brought some baked goods today. Wouldn't yeah, it killed I'm you? Starting. Flower basket. I already am on the hook for uh, baked goods for the dentist today. Because, oh, really? Yeah, my brother. Uh, my brother's a dentist, and he's putting a new crown on my tooth. Nice. And he's doing it at cost instead of the whatever the three thousand dollars that everybody else wanted to charge me. Let's hope. And I said, well, uh, what? Uh, let me take you out for steak dinner. And he said, how about you just bring in some goods for the staff? So nice. Yeah. So instead of me, you know, taking him down to Manny's, I'm going to buy twelve dollars worth of donuts at Cub. That's that having a brother, a dentist for a brother's mm-hmm. pretty. That's pretty strong. Yeah. As far as like what you want your siblings to do, that's pretty. 
pretty good. Oh, yeah. No, I, a lot of siblings. I have one brother that had sent me a text one time that said, uh, hey, man, you want to go in on some Bitcoin? Okay. <laughs> sure. This was like four months ago, yeah. you guys. This yeah. was not This was not in the height of Bitcoin. This was it literally like four months ago. I was like, no, yeah. like, you're a burden on all of us. Yeah, I'm exactly starting, right. This is making sense that you, why you still live with mom and dad. Like, no, Man. I'm not. There's not. Ha- so to have a brother who's a dentist and especially to have a daughter who had like shark teeth. My daughter's teeth were terrible mm. when she was young. Wow. She had two rows of them. Like double really? rows of teeth. Yeah. The, the, the second set of teeth were growing in behind yeah, right. the baby teeth. Yeah. And then, you know, we started going to the dentist and getting braces. And then braces are not like they used to be. Mm-mm, you know, no. but, you know, they're super expensive. And then you have to do two rounds now instead of just like the straight up wow. one round. Mm-hmm. But it is, yeah. So I have him in my back pocket and go, hey, man, you want to uh, give a guy a cleaning? And he's that's, like, yeah, absolutely. That's pretty strong. Yeah. I have seven siblings. How many siblings Whoa. do you have? Uh, long story with my siblings. I have, uh, I just have a brother that I met for the first time three years ago. Oh, and boy. then I have a sister that I met for the first time a year ago. Oh, man. So, yeah. So I got all over the place. But a full sister I yeah. grew up with. Okay. And then a bunch of steps. To, I got it. Got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So I got seven and only two of them, no dentists or doctors. Uh, everybody does a, a million different things. But I'm just now off the top of my head going, yeah, only two of them were ever any good for me. <laughs> my brother, Doug, was a, what used to be a Motorola rep. So I always had good Motorola cell phones. Okay. You know, and get walkie talkies. Yeah. That's cool stuff he could hook you up with. Back in the 90s, uh, he got me a phone for my car in 1991, and I used it once. And then I got the bill, and it was like $309 for four calls. And I was like, okay, thanks, dude. I won't be turning that on ever again. Um, was it the bag phone? The leather bag? No, it was oh. uh, just, just installed into the phone, oh, into the car. Oh, gotcha. You couldn't take it out of the car. Oh. It was hardwired in. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my sister Anne is a costumer on Broadway and on Hollywood sets for dec- for for years. Still does it. And uh, so she used to make stuff I'd wear on stage. She would whip out some suits and all that real easy. Really? Oh, yeah. It's good to have a costumer in the family. Yeah. For anything, like when you're, you know, if your daughter's got a, you know, you need a dress made like tomorrow. Yeah, my sister will hook you up. Yeah. Or you just want to spice things up for yourself in yeah. an average day. There is that too. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no shortage of uh, of spice going on with her. <laughs> but speaking of spicing up, I did mention this. Uh, there are going to be uh, Summer Olympic Games in L.A. in 2028. You got Paris next summer, 2024. And then 2028, the Los Angeles Olympiad. And they have introduced... I am not making this up. Flag football yeah. as an Olympic sport. What like country? It. How many countries play football? There's the United States of America, and then there's Canada. Mm-hmm. Where else? Uh, American Samoa. Mm-hmm. Where else do they play football? How, how is anyone going to come close to the United States on that on that medal podium in flag football? Uh, I think Ooh. Australia is going to be good at this. Yeah, they're used to the football, you know, the rugby. They're used to. Okay, that's it's, a good it's, point. It's kind of flag football ish, yeah. but I, I don't. It doesn't seem like it has that big of appeal. You know, yeah. I, I get why they're doing the games in Germany and London now because the NFL wants to branch out. Yeah, right. But for flag football, I don't know. Also, we're playing kids' games as adults now. Mm-hmm. You notice that, like the dodgeball leagues, the the kickball sure. leagues, ultimate sure. frisbee, Did, ultimate frisbee. Like whatever happened to just good old beer league softball? Uh, Why can't we just have that? Just have that come back. That I was think when we ma- have uh, cops and robbers. <laughs> <laughs> that would cops be epic. and robbers capture the flag. Oh man! Yeah. Like 2028, it's like, well, we're uh, we're gonna leave flag football on our way to tetherball now. Oh, tether I'm ball. so good yeah. at tetherball. I, I will challenge any of you at tetherball. Is that where you day. have a? That's the ball on a rope. Oh, I'm and so a pole. good at it. Punch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what? Nothing says more about we're not optimistic about the future of this economy than giving a playground a tetherball. Oh, it's court. so fun. <laughs> we used to play for hours. I'm seriously, seriously, I'm really good. I'm okay. not good at a lot of stuff. What do you mean? What? Do you, what is wow. good? What? There's no point to oh, that. Oh yeah, you gotta yeah. be strong. You gotta have a. You gotta get it around and around. It's not easy. You gotta just, get her to wrap around. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like two guys with a baseball bat trying to get their hand on top. That's what tetherball looks like to me. <laughs> yeah. It's like there's no strategy. This is just whatever. All right, let's go, Gorman. I, I will, I, I'm willing to, to attempt to be, uh, if you think you can uh, redirect my thoughts on tetherball, I'll give it a shot. All right. Do you know where a tetherball, I'll find one. What do you call it? A tetherball. I will. 
pole arena court. I'm picturing <laughs> just crabgrass and and you know like some tin cans, and spider webs. Yes, yeah, spider webs. <laughs> Like a like a there's like a thing at WD forty that they last used it like nine years ago and it's just empty now. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's your tetherball court. Okay, we'll see. All right, well that gives me something to look forward to. But right now, why don't we look back? How about a history lesson? <laughs> that's right. On this day in 1983, 40 years ago today, I last felt great about the game of baseball. My Baltimore Orioles won the World Series. Rick Dempsey, the MVP of that series, the catcher for the Orioles. 40 years ago, I was driving in a car on I-40 in Tennessee when they won, driving home from Baltimore from a family wedding, uh, my brother Jim's uh, wedding 40 years ago yesterday, and the Orioles won, and I was pumping my fist and honking the horn and screaming and freaking out, and if you told me that day that 40, if you had said, hey, 40 years from now, you'll be in Minnesota and the Orioles will still not have won another World (laughs) Series, I would have driven right into a ditch. I would have taken my seatbelt off and just chucked it in. I could have never imagined 40 years without a World Series. But uh, hope springs eternal. Looks like next year is going to be our year. What can I say? The KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS.